So I'm gonna walk you through how I am gonna process this photo of this starfish that I took in Grand Cayman at a place called Starfish Point. We um, uh, went out by boat and uh, found this place that had just starfish lying everywhere. They're all alive. So I was shooting through the water and I had a polarizing filter on my lens that got out most of the glare. Um, but let's just jump right in. I'm gonna show you kind of how I, how I manage my processing. So for me, the first thing I do is I take a look at um, the photo itself and think about what do I wanna enhance and what do I want to uh, de-emphasize or even get rid of. And in this photo, I want to bring out the colors of the starfish, uh, the nice reddish orange kind of color, um, and also the color contrast between the starfish and the sand. Uh, it's got a nice contrast there, so I want to enhance that. Some of the things that I'm not so crazy about, um, you see some of this little bit of seagrass here and a couple of other little elements that I just don't think enhance the image that much, so I'm gonna get rid of those. Also, you can see my shadow <laughs> on the sand. Uh, that's definitely unsightly, and if I am gonna try to sell this on a stock photo site, no one's gonna wanna see that. Um, I also think it could use a, a little bit of a crop. Um, again, if it's going on a stock photo site, somebody's gonna want some leading space for their own uh, text or, or graphics on one side, so I am gonna crop this. Um, but let's just jump right in. I'll kinda walk you through. The first thing I like to do is go down to camera calibration and just change this profile from Adobe Standard to camera neutral. Um, I tend to play around with these just to see kind of what they look like, but I usually end up going with camera neutral just because I like to have something that's a little bit more flat that I can bring out all the detail and color and things in myself. So from there, I'm going to go to lens corrections, and I almost always check remove chromatic aberration, which is that kind of color bleed or color blur that happens along um, contrasty edges. And there might not be any in this, but it never hurts to check that. And I also tend to play with enable profile corrections um, just to see if it's something that I wanna use. In this one, because I had a really tight crop up here, um, I am going to leave this unchecked to give myself just a little bit more space to play with there. So starting out, I'm going to go to my white balance. And I think that as shot looks okay, um, auto, that's yeah, a little too washed out. Um, daylight, I think that looks a little bit better, although... Yeah, cloudy, definitely not. So daylight is about 5,500. Ash shot, uh, 5,250. It's not that different. I think I'll probably leave it with daylight since it was daylight. And that looks good to me. Um, you know, it's really kind of a personal preference, I guess. Um, because I was shooting through water, even though uh, my uh, polarizing filter took out some of the glare, it definitely still looks a little hazy just because it's shot through water. So what I am gonna come down and work with is my, in the effects panel, dehaze. And I'm not gonna punch this up too much, but just enough so yeah, see, now the starfish is really starting to pop out there. Um, I don't wanna go much higher than that because I am gonna add my own contrast and that already gives the starfish quite a bit of contrast. So about 28 there, looks pretty good. So go back to the basic panel. And I look at my histogram now and I see that uh, it's pushed a little to the right. I could, I could bring down the exposure, but I, I think I'm gonna play with highlights first because if I am gonna do some contrast, um, yeah, bring that down a little bit. And that puts it a little bit closer to the middle, which is just fine. I think that's gonna work out fine. Uh, if I bring down the exposure, it's just gonna be a barely at all, like 0.5, maybe point, let's do minus. 0.1, that's good. Sometimes it's better just to type it in to get it exactly the way you want it. So that'll leave me some room to um, add some contrast. I don't really think I need to mess with anything else because it's already pretty well balanced. So if I add some clarity now under presence, 
that really starts to bring out some of the detail in the starfish. Um, don't really need a whole lot. I think that's pretty good. Um, so one of the things I said I wanted to enhance was the color of the starfish. So I'm going to bump up the vibrance first just to see. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely like that. Um, probably leave it around there. Maybe just add a touch of saturation, but really not much at all. No, I'm going backwards now. Sometimes what I like to do is kind of go to the extreme just to see what I don't want and then back off from there. Um, so actually 14 is not bad. I usually like to go somewhere between, you know, zero and 20 um, on saturation. Adding too much just really does not make it look very good oftentimes. So I think that's about good right there. Um, I think for me, the next thing I'm going to do before I mess with anything else is get rid of some of the things that aren't going to be here anyway by cropping it. And I've got it set to, I think this is called a golden ratio. If you hit O on your keyboard, it'll cycle through some of the other, uh, see this is the common rule of thirds. And that's okay, but for what I want to do, um, I'm going to put it back on this one. And I want to leave some leading space on the right side. And I think if I kind of put this left vertical line right about center on the, tops, uh, the top arm of that starfish, and then these, this top, ver uh, top horizontal line lines up pretty well on uh, the other two arms. Um, it, you know, to get a better feel for how this looks, if you hit L on your keyboard, you can go lights out, and if you hit it again, you can get everything out of there. So as you move things around, you get a much better feel for what it's actually gonna look like, because this is exactly what it's gonna look like. And I think maybe even move it, yeah, all the way over like that. That leaves just enough space. I think I actually might pull this in just a touch more to leave a little bit more room on that side. I think that looks pretty good. So I'm going to hit that L key again. Whoops. There we go. Hit return to crop that. And we're looking pretty good now. Um, I think if I go to tone curve, that'd probably be my next thing. And, and you know, a lot of people do this when they're working in Lightroom. They kind of call it the waterfall effect. You start from the top and work your way down. Some of the things I did at the beginning, I feel like I really need to get done, like camera calibration before I do anything else. But um, kind of going through this waterfall effect. Now, you can play around with just, you know, clicking here and um, choosing a medium contrast, which that actually looks pretty good. Strong contrast, I mean, that's a little much for me. I, there's about a hundred ways to do the same thing in Lightroom. So you could start with this, you could make your own adjustments. If you don't like something that you do, you can just come back here and put it back to linear and that gives it a straight line again. Um, you can tell taking it off that that really, the tone curve really did help to give it a little bit of extra boost. Now I could come in here and kind of do my own little starting at the bottom, pull that down just a little bit, and then come up here towards the highlights and pull this up a little bit. And it's gonna create a very similar effect to what it gave me when I did a medium contrast. It's not that far off. I actually think I just prefer what it did there with medium contrast. So I'm gonna leave it like that for now. I'm um, not going to do anything with um, the HSL panel. I think the color is, is pretty true to life right now. I'm um, not going to do any split toning, so I'll go down to detail. And because the water was moving um, a little bit, you can see some of the ripples in the water. So there are some things that are a little bit blurred out, but for where you can see the good detail sort of here on top. And by the way, this is sand. At first, my eye thought, oh, no, I caught a lot of... Um, reflection off the water, but that's actually sand. So it defaults to 25 uh, on sharpening. I'm going to bring that up just a touch. And I shot this at ISO 100. So I'm going to look at some of the areas where there might be an introduction of noise. And there's not really here, 
But just because a lot of this uh, sand is blurred and there's no need to sharpen it really, I am gonna turn masking on, hold down the option key and kind of pull that so that it's just getting really the main parts of the starfish there. So that looks better. Uh, I'm gonna come down. I don't think I need any noise reduction now um, because I've done that. So come down to, really that's it because I've already done lens corrections. So um, the next thing that I wanna do is remove some of these little elements that I don't want. So I'm gonna come to the spot removal tool. I've got it on heel, which is fine. Uh, if I use my right bracket key, I can increase the size to be just slightly bigger than the thing I'm trying to remove. And it's gonna sample, and you can see that it sampled from the edge of the starfish, which I don't really want. I want it to come from the sand itself. So I'm gonna change that, I think, right. i get some spot that doesn't have too much in it. I think that looks pretty good right. Yeah, right there, that's fine. Doesn't have to be exact. You can really spend too much time doing this stuff, and I think you kinda of have to use the at a glance rule, which means, if somebody's gonna make a decision about whether they like your photo or not within the first couple of seconds, probably not even a second. And so if you just take a quick glance at it, you know, does it look good to you? Is that good? Don't go crazy on some of this stuff. That did a pretty good job. Uh, there's a little piece of something here. Don't really know what that is, but it's almost like a little piece of a shell or something. I'm gonna make it just slightly bigger See how that goes. Perfect. Um, and if I'm really nitpicky, I'm gonna get rid of some of these smaller elements, but you don't really have to go crazy just because I can and it's easy. I'm gonna get rid of a couple of these little things just to, again, I'm using the left, left and right bracket keys to make this bigger and smaller. And I see that one outside the shadow box. It's not gonna matter. Um, I say shadow box outside the shadow. It's not gonna matter that much in the end because I am going to uh, do one quick thing in Photoshop that I think is gonna be easier done in Photoshop that I'll show you in a second to get rid of that shadow. But again, being really, really nitpicky here, I don't have to go um, too overboard here. And I think that's looking pretty good. It's not, I don't wanna remove all the natural elements because it is, Sand is nature, looks good. It's what God gave us, so there we go. Got rid of some of those things. And you can see if I go back here to turn that off and on, this is with it off, these are with the elements back, and this is looking a lot better to me just to remove those distractions. So the last thing I'm gonna do before I exit out of here to go into Photoshop to remove the shadow, I'm just gonna go ahead and put in the effects, the effects panel. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit of a vignette. Don't wanna go too crazy on this. Probably there's good. Again, you can go to the extreme to see what you don't want. I mean, if you really wanted a uh, if you wanted this effect, that'd be great, but for me, I just want enough that's gonna keep the viewer's eye from going too far outside of the middle of the shot. So I think minus eight is pretty good. I might even go minus 10. Yeah, it's looking great to me. All right, so then I'm just gonna go up to uh, edit and, nope, sorry, photo. <laughs> and then edit in, that's what I was thinking, edit in Adobe Photoshop. It's gonna open up Photoshop and we're gonna get rid of, it's my family that I took with me to uh, Grand Caymans. That was us in Ireland last year. It's one thing about being a photographer. Uh, it's a great excuse to travel, great excuse. Um, first thing I do when I come into Photoshop, just in case I mess something up terribly, I am going to create a duplicate layer and I'm just gonna call this clone because I'm essentially gonna clone this, um, this shadow out. And I think I'm gonna start with the lasso tool. 
because it's kind of a it's a bigger section and it's sort of a weird shape so I'm just gonna come around the shadow leaving a little bit of space um, between the shadow and not shadow and then with that selected I'm gonna come up to file I'm sorry edit and fill and it's already set to content aware which is what I want and I click OK. I'll wait for a second. Boom. No more shadow. If I hit Command or con, uh, Control D on my keyboard, gone. And if I go back to Layers and I turn this one off, shadow, no shadow. Shadow, no shadow. Looks wonderful to me. File and Save. And it's saving down here. When I come back, to Lightroom, you see the shadow there, and when it finishes saving, boom, no more shadow. So now if I go back to Library, you're gonna see the original photo here, I'm sorry, the original one here with the shadow and all the other things, and this is the one that came in uh, from Photoshop. And to see the before and after, you can do a couple things. You can hit your Y key to see side by side what these things look. Oh, of course, I have got to get out of this one and go back in because we only made one change from Lightroom there. So generally, just forget about the shadow being there, but you can see this is what it looked like originally, and this is how it's really popping now. Um, if I want to go back to full screen and I go back to, uh, if I hit my back slash key, that's another way just to see in line before and after, before and after. That's it. Of course, if I really want to see, I come to this one. So that's it. Subscribe to get more videos like this. Uh, it's Schubert Photography and hope you enjoyed. Happy shooting out there, guys.